Have you ever thought of taking part in a reality show? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my review for Killing Room. We're looking at, yet again, another first-person shooter roguelike. Not to make that sound like a bad thing, because Killing Room is actually one of my favorite FPS roguelikes so far. But that's not to say it's without its flaws, because they're definitely there. Well, let's get into what makes Killing Room a unique game. So the basic idea is that you're on a reality TV show called Killing Room, and just like any other roguelike, you progress while going from room to room, but Killing Room's twist on the genre is that you have an audience judging your performance. Like I said about this being a reality TV show, you have an audience you want to keep happy and entertained. You even have this robot following you around like a little cameraman. And there's different things you can do to make the audience like you or not. The most common one, and something you'll see me go out of my way to do when killing enemies, is the combo multiplier. You see that meter at the top left? This is the popularity meter where the audience judges you, and boy do they judge you a lot. And like I said with the combo multiplier being the most common, you want to kill enemies quickly together or in a group. This can really change the dynamic of the gameplay and just how you go about things. You're not always trying to clear out these rooms as fast as possible. The audience judging you makes you want to clear each room efficiently to raise the popularity meter. And there's many other ways to get your popularity meter up, like not just going the main route and entering the side rooms and other random ways like saving ducks, but it's not just about what makes your popularity meter go up, it's also about what makes it go down. There's seemingly a lot of ways to make your popularity go down, like even just entering the main doors to continue and using these vending machines and and even shooting that robot that follows you around. So your popularity meter is a very big part of the game and it's something you'll always be thinking about when you're playing. The reason why it's important is because at the end of each floor, the audience will reward you with good items only if your popularity is good. But if it's bad, then they'll give you bad items. It makes it fun to play along and take part of this reality TV show. But that's something else about this game. When you first look at gameplay or screenshots of this game, it looks like it goes for more of a spooky or horror type of vibe, right? But this game does not take itself seriously at all, and it's actually pretty funny. Like, there's subtle and over-the-top humor all over this game, from the dialogue to the items and their descriptions. Wow. It gives this game a level of self-awareness that I appreciate and find entertaining. I think more games should have this fun, less serious approach. Killing Room is meant to be a parody of reality TV shows, specifically about some older movie called Running Man or something. Yeah, I don't know the origins of this game's influence, but either way, I really like Killing Room's presentation. Speaking of the presentation, one thing you might be able to have noticed while watching this video is that this game doesn't run the best. This is actually the biggest problem with this game in my opinion. It's just choppy and doesn't run smoothly. I don't mind the graphics, they look decently good on high settings, but this is one of the few games I would actually recommend playing on lower settings, especially during some of the boss fights. Oh, and don't even get me started on the boss fights. I actually really like the boss fights and how they're designed and everything, the problem is just what I said a second ago. Some of these boss fights can lag a lot. It just sucks because this is supposed to be one of the more intense parts of the game and it partially feels like it's out of your control when you lag so badly. Like I'm grateful the game only crashed one time. I just highly recommend using low settings on the very last boss fight, trust me. 
Now let's talk about something that isn't affected by bad optimization. We have the RPG elements with the stats and items. Every single game you start, you get some type of small bonus stat. From that point on, you can decide how your stats go. At the end of each floor, you can put two points each into three separate categories of stats for a total of six points per floor. I think in this footage I got lucky and got an item that gives me more, but that's just me getting very lucky. This is the RPG side of the game, but it's still a traditional roguelike where you have to start all these stats over once you die. I mean, there are some permanent items for basic things like getting your crosshair and starting the game with some lockpicks. But most of the items you'll be getting throughout your runs are only for each individual run. And this is something where the humor can shine. A lot of the items that would have basic boring names and descriptions in other games are more fun and humorous in this game. It's just something that I appreciate. But I think that's mostly everything I wanted to say on Killing Room. It was really fun checking out this game despite some of its flaws. I played this game for about 25 hours with that being pretty good replayability. It was fun progressing through the game and getting achievements. The runs themselves had a good progression to them and lasted around 2 hours each if you fully explore. The game wasn't too hard, but it felt fair. I played on normal and beat the game for the first time on my 7th run. There is a hardcore mode, but that sounds pretty brutal. It was already fun and challenging enough managing my ammo, popularity, health, and money playing on normal. Also making fun decisions like lockpicking a coffin that can lose you popularity but also gain you some health. Oh, and not to mention one really big thing when you're entering these rooms is that some of them can have a fun twist or challenge to them. Like some rooms can have death traps or obstacles, and other rooms can have free weapons or a duck. The possibilities are endless, but then there's the puzzle rooms which can change the pace of gameplay in a good way. There's a lot of these puzzle rooms, and they can vary from figuring something out, or doing parkour, or sometimes it's just something clever and fun. Usually roguelikes have these types of rooms to switch things up, and I think Killing Room did a good job. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. To me, this was another game to play and check off the list. But I know this game had some hype back when it came out in 2016 because a bunch of big YouTubers were playing it at the time. That's probably how some of you know this game if you do, but surprisingly there's only a handful of reviews on this game. So hey, I thought I'd be a part of that handful. To me, it just makes it obvious that the publishers just paid big YouTubers to play their game, opposed to these big YouTubers just wanting to play their game. Which is fine, I respect the hustle. I mean, I could be wrong, it looks like all the games is who made this game. Turns out they made a couple of other games I know, like Band of Defenders and Walking Zombie 2. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to check out those games now. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would really appreciate a like if you did enjoy the video. Drop a comment telling me what you thought about the concept of this game or just your opinion on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you've been enjoying the content. Check on the screen or in the description for more roguelike reviews. Thank you guys for watching the entire video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.